that taking action is the most important step when it comes to creating change. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But the whole point here is I had to look at what I needed to change about myself in my thoughts, my emotions, and my actions, and then change those things in myself. This is what most people want to run away from. They want to say, yeah, I want those things that I say I want to magically to be present in my life, but I don't want to do those things that require self-change in how I think, in how I feel, and in how I act. I want it magically to happen without changing those things in me. So I can honestly look at the rest of the world and say, the problem does not lie within me. I am not seeing a manifestation of myself in other people. Other people have not done the same process that I have the introspective work that I have, and gone through that painful, painstaking work that involves effort, hard effort. I'm not up here telling people, I'm offering you the, the tonic. You're going to take a sip and magically you will be enlightened. Okay? Knowing what's going on in the world is hard work. It involves destruction. It's a destructive process. It involves destruction of belief systems. It involves completely breaking down barriers that are in your head. Okay? Hardly anybody wants to do that work. People want to run a million miles an hour in the opposite direction from that work. Anything but that. I'll take the grave instead of that. Okay? That's where most people's heads are at. All right? So let's get back to the steps here for problem solving. The first is, you got to recognize that there's a problem. If you are in denial, good luck. Let me know how that works out for you. Because you're not solving any problem in a state of denial at all. Fear-based denial of the problem must first be dealt with and conquered and stamped out. And you have to acknowledge how bad it is. You know, people feel symptoms coming on of a disease or something and they want to ignore it because they don't want to believe I'm sick. I don't want to believe I'm sick. I don't want to believe I have a problem. Then you're waiting, waiting, waiting. You don't get it diagnosed. And then it turns into a much bigger problem, which is where we're at as a society for ignoring this information. This is what denial looks like, symbolically. Okay? A person with their head in the sand like an ostrich. And please take note, ladies and gentlemen, when you're in this position, when you're in the position of denial with your head in the sand, you're on your knees with your ass in the air. Okay? I almost say it's amazingly synchronistic that the human body was designed like that. That in order to put your head in the sand, symbolically so to speak, you have to be on your knees. Okay? And that's where most of our society is at. They're on their knees. And in that state of denial. The second step to problem solving is to recognize that the symptoms that are being displayed, the symptoms you are seeing, are merely effects of underlying causal factors. You can't treat symptoms and solve a problem. It's not possible. That's not how problem solving works. You have to get to what caused the problem. Okay? Instead of simply treating symptoms, make an accurate diagnosis of the causes of the problem. So what does the word diagnosis mean? Diagnosis comes from Greek. The preposition dia transliterated there, there in the parentheses, you see it in, in Greek script, okay? It means through or by way of. So by a method, by a particular method, all right? And the second part of diagnosis is the Greek noun gnosis. Gnosis means knowledge in Greek. So what a diagnosis means is through knowledge or by way of knowledge, you're going to solve the problem by way of knowledge. There is knowledge that acts as the requirement to solving the problem and getting what you want. And here's another thing, and I'm going to keep going back to this. It's going to be like an undercurrent in this. Because the New Age community, and I'm going to be, I'm, have been, but I'm going to become a more outspoken opponent of New Age ideologies. Because they are lying to people. Whether it be through direct, willful deception, or whether it be but through useful dupes and useful idiots, they are telling people things that are completely inaccurate to how things really work. All right? 
because they want to keep people suppressed and non-active. They want people in acceptance mode of everything. Accept, 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 never rebel, okay? Don't take action, just observe, just watch. You'll hear all these things in the New Age movement, okay? The reason I bring it up is because when you even say the word knowledge to some New Agers, they almost take offense. Because what's, what the New Age is becoming is the new modern day variant. It's a new form of what's known as solipsism. And we're going to get to what solipsism is in a little while. Okay? But essentially, people don't want to hear that knowledge is what is required. Because the attainment of real knowledge, not pseudo-knowledge, real knowledge, requires work. It requires effort. It requires reading. It requires listening. It requires watching. And you know what most of all it requires that people don't want to give up? Who can tell me? Time. Thank you, sir. It requires time. There's one of the currencies people don't spend, uh, you know, on many things that they don't feel they can get immediate gratification from which is why immediate gratification is so stressed in our society by the control system. That's what keeps people in their ignorance. So a diagnosis means if you're going to get well, you've got to have the knowledge of the underlying causal factors that, that led to the creation of the symptoms. You're not going to treat the symptoms and get well. You've got to have the knowledge to get to the causal factors to find out what cause put this into effect. And we're going to talk a lot about cause and effect. The third step to problem solving is through the knowledge that you've acquired now via making an accurate diagnosis of the problem of the causal factors, right? You're going to then put that knowledge into action. Understanding what created the problem is like step two, right? Stop being in denial. Understand what caused the problem act on the knowledge you now have to solve the problem, to make it right, okay? So action is required. We make the diagnosis, then we have to take the required action necessary to rectify or to set right, which is what the word rectify means, the causal factors that led to the manifestation of the problem. Let's talk a little bit about the concept of what truth is, how I refer to truth in all of my work because people have a real deeply mystified concept of what truth is or what it means you know they'll get into all these really deep abstract discussions of uh, the mind of god and you know uh, trying to get into like you know quantum theory and everything this is mystification of the concept of the truth and we have to demystify it we have to bring it down to real simple, easy to understand language that anybody can comprehend. And then really completely delineate that from perception of any given thing. Because the two are not the same. When people say perception is reality, nothing could be farther from reality than that statement. Perception is not reality. Okay? It is just what it says. Perception. Seeing through. Perceive. To see through something like a lens or a filter, okay? I perceive things differently without these glasses. That's one perception. When I put them on, I perceive things quite differently and more clearly, okay? Well, that's how human perception works, like a lens. It's a filter, okay? But what's there is the same thing. What's there is the same thing. All the changes how I perceived it, all right? So let's look at this concept. Truth is objective. That means that it's not dependent upon the perceptions of human beings. No one wants to hear that. That is, that is a direct assault, a direct frontal assault on the human ego. Because everybody wants to hear, my perceptions are important. And we want to also believe my perceptions are accurate. Okay? Now people will say, well, what makes you say your perception of this topic is going to be accurate? 
That's because I went through the process of having to admit over and over and over and over and over again endlessly how wrong I was about my former perceptions. I went through that destructive process of breaking down my former belief systems, of breaking down my former emotional patterns, of, uh, and of, of most of all changing my behavior. That's the thing that's the most destructive because we get attached to our behaviors and patterns. So asking people to change, I recognize it's not easy. It took me like probably, probably about eight years of my life to do it. Most people don't want to spend a minute on creating personal change, let alone eight years. And you know, when I look at myself in all honesty, again, none of this is to sound egoic or to toot my own horn, but I look at it like I was a mild case of ego entrapment. A mild case compared to where I see other people at. I, I, I feel like I was the, uh, uh, you know, a very brittle stone that just needed to be hit with a chisel a few times and it broke into powder. You know, other people are hardened granite or diamond. You know, to break them down is going to take enormous effort and work. And most of them don't even want to do it. They're so calcified. You know, they're so, they've been so compressed into that hardened state that they don't even want to start. So I realize telling people your perceptions are not what really matters. You know, that the truth isn't based upon how you perceive things, that it's independent from your perceptions. Most people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Human beings' perceptions are capable of wavering. They can, they can waver slightly from the truth, and they can waver wildly from the truth. All right? What truth is, is that which does not waver. It doesn't move. It's that which is. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about it. It doesn't matter whether anybody believes it. It doesn't matter whether anybody knows it. It doesn't matter whether anybody sees it. It doesn't matter whether anybody wants to see it. It's there. It's always been there. It's always going to be there. Nothing anybody does can change what has happened. Can anybody change what has already occurred in what we call, in, in the thinking of linear time, the past? Not one person here is capable of doing that. Let me tell you something. Not one being in the entire manifested universe is capable of doing that. Because that which has already occurred is set in the record of the universe. Nothing can change the past, ever. Great movie on this. Watch the new movie, The Time Machine. Not the original 50s version or 60s version. The new one. I think it came out in late 90s or early 2000s. Okay? This movie got crushed in reviews. Crushed. Whenever reviewers crush a movie and give it the worst ratings, go see that film.